Okay, so we've now proven uh, the Minkowski inequality, which I've got above me here, and uh, we want to now uh, finish our work on the LP space and uh, go over the uh, LP space as a metric space again. So if you recall from an earlier video, uh, the LP space uh, is the, f foremostly it's a set, so it's a set of are all sequences, so uh, sequence as x, so let's say x is a sequence uh, consisting of the elements x1, x2, x3, etc. And uh, the xi's are either real numbers or they might be complex numbers, depending on whether this is a real LP space or whether it's a complex LP space. And uh, the sequences need to be such that the summation i is equal to 1 to infinity, the modulus of xi. Uh, to the power of p is a, is finite basically it's non not infinite so that's the set on which we are going to define a metric um, so it consists of all these sequences uh, for which this sum is finite okay and it, they can either have elements in the real numbers or complex numbers depending on whether it's a real LP space or a complex LP space and uh, we define the metric uh, the distance function between uh, a sequence X and a sequence Y so remember uh, X and Y will both are both sequences so X is equal to X1 uh, X2 uh, X3 etc and Y is equal to Y1 Y2 uh, Y3 etc uh, and the distance between x and y is going to be defined to be equal to uh, the uh, summation uh, i is equal to 1 to infinity of the modulus of xi minus yi uh, to the power of p and then we're going to take that to the power of 1 over p okay uh, so firstly let's make sure that this is well defined and the reason this is well defined is that uh, well if it's going to be well defined then this needs to be uh, it needs to be a finite uh, non-negative real number so we, there's no there's no question that it's not going to be uh, non-negative you, you you are summing up xi minus yi the modulus of that and that is always going to be non-negative uh, to the power of p it's going to remain non-negative you sum it all up you're going to get some non-negative uh, limit and then uh, you take that non-negative number and do it to the power of 1 over p that's still going to be a non-negative number. Okay, uh, so uh, there's no question that this is going to be non-negative, but we need to make sure that it's finite, uh, which is, uh, if this is going to be finite, if, it, if, um, if the whole thing is going to be finite, then uh, if we uh, take to the both uh, the power, if we raise, uh, we raise both sides to the power of p, then we get basically that uh, the only way that this is going to be equal to fi is finite is if the sum i is equal to 1 to infinity of xi minus yi, the modulus of that to the power of p, is finite, i.e. Uh, x minus y is an element of LP. Now, uh, why is x minus y going to be an element of LP? Well, firstly, uh, let's make sure that minus yi uh, is going to uh, is going to be an element. Oh, okay, sorry. If I define minus y to be equal to minus y1 minus y2 minus y3, then that is still going to be an element of LP. So minus y is going to be an element of LP. Uh, the reason being uh, that if I take uh, this sum, the sum from i is equal to 1 to infinity of uh, the negative yi uh, to the power of p, that's still going to be finite. In fact, it's going to be exactly the same as I is, uh, the sum from i is equal to 1 to infinity of the modulus of yi to the power of p. So basically, what I've just proven there is that if y is an element of LP, uh, that it, then it implies uh, that negative y is an element of LP. So I can view x minus y as being x plus negative y. Okay, so that's helpful because the summation i is equal to 1 to infinity, the modulus of xi minus yi, uh, the modulus up to the power of p, all of that to the power of 1 over p, I can view this now as being uh, the Minkowski using the Minkowski inequality up here, uh, this is it here, I can view that, I can say that this is going to be less than or equal uh, to the uh, summation i is equal to 1 to infinity, the modulus of xi to the power of p over 1 over p, plus uh, the summation i is equal to 1 to infinity of negative, the modulus of negative yi to the power of p to the power of 1 over p. And then this 
Negative y is an element of LP, uh, so this inequality is perfectly true, uh, because all I'm view saying, basically, is uh, it's the Minkowski inequality when you view yi as just being the negative of that. Uh, so this is perfectly true, and we therefore do get that this value uh, is going to be finite, because it's bounded by these two things, and it's going to be monotonically increasing as n approaches infinity, etc. Uh, so uh, we do this value, uh, this uh, distance function between x and y is well defined because of the Minkowski, because of the Minkowski inequality, uh, because it's going to be less than or equal to these two things, and these two things are finite. Uh, so firstly, it is far, it is uh, well defined. Um, Okay, so now let's make sure that it does indeed obey the axioms of a metric space. So we've already checked them once in the uh, prior video, the first three, uh, but we'll just go over them again. So let's make sure that the distance between x and y is going to be an element of the non-negative uh, real numbers. Uh, so the distance between x and y is going to be defined to be the sum from i is equal to 1 to infinity of the modulus of xi minus yi to the power of p to the power of 1 over p. Now, uh, the xi minus yi, the modulus of that, is greater than or equal to 0, uh, which implies that xi, the modulus of xi minus yi to the power of p is greater than or equal to 0, and that then implies that the summation i is equal to 1 to infinity. Since this is true for all i is an element of the natural numbers, it implies that the summation from i is equal to 1 to infinity of xi minus yi uh, to the power of p is greater than or equal to 0, which implies that the sum from i is equal to 1 to infinity of xi minus yi to the power of p to the power uh, to the power of 1 over p is also greater than or equal to 0. Okay, so that's property 1 in checked. Uh, property 2 is that the distance between x and x needs to be equal to 0. Well, just by definition, this is the sum from i is equal to 1 to infinity of the modulus of xi minus xi uh, to the power of p, all of that to the power of 1 over p. Now, for absolutely all terms, uh, so let i be any natural number, uh, xi minus xi is going to equal 0. 0 to the power, and the modulus of 0 is still 0. 0 to the power of p is still 0, so you're adding up infinitely many zeros, which still gives you 0. And if you take 0 to the power of 1 over p, that's still equal to 0. So excellent, we get uh, that the distance between a point, uh, a sequence and itself is 0. So now let's say the distance between x and y is equal to 0. Uh, show me that, x, that that implies that x and y is equal to y, i.e. the only way for uh, the distance to be equal to 0 is if the two points are actually the same point in the metric space. OK, so this implies that uh, the summation i is equal to 1 to infinity of the modulus of xi minus yi to the power of p, all of that to the power of 1 over p, is equal to 0. Uh, which implies that um, this implies uh, that the summation i is equal to 1 to infinity of the modulus of xi minus yi to the p uh, is equal to 0 because the only thing that uh, if you um, the only way that uh, uh, a, a real number to the power of 1 over p can equal 0 is if that real number is equal to 0. Uh, so um, we therefore get that this summation must equal 0 but uh, if you view this as the limit as n approaches infinity of the summation i is equal to 1 to n, the modulus of xi minus yi to the power of p is equal to 0. Uh, well, um, this here, this sequence that we are taking the limit of, is a monotonically increasing sequence because each one of these terms of the series is positive, or is greater than or equal to 0. So, uh, that implies uh, that uh, since it's a monotonically increasing sequence and it's all, all of the terms are non-negative and it's converging on zero, it has to just equal zero, 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 zero. So it basically, for all n, for all uh, little n is an element of the natural numbers, the summation i is equal to 1 to n of the modulus of xi minus yi to the power of p must equal zero which implies that each individual term of the series must equal zero, uh, because uh, just take the difference between the n plus oneth term and the nth term, and you get that xi minus yi to the power of p must equal zero. Uh, and the only way that uh, something to the power of p can equal zero is if that something is equal to zero. So the modulus must equal zero, and the only way that uh, a real or complex number can have modulus zero is if that real or complex number is zero. So 
it implies that xi minus yi is equal to zero, so xi is equal to yi. So uh, for all i is an element of the natural numbers is the important thing there. Uh, so that implies that x is equal to y. Okay, so fi uh, third property is that the distance between x and y should equal the distance between y and x. We'll just go back to the definition. This is the sum i is equal to 1 uh, to infinity of the modulus of xi minus yi uh, to the power of p, all of that to the power of 1 over p. Uh, well, uh, we can just swap the order in, of here in here because uh, the modulus doesn't care if we multiply the inside by negative 1. Uh, so, um, yeah. Uh, so this is equal to the sum from i is equal to 1 to infinity of the modulus of yi minus xi to the power of p, all of that to the power of 1 over p, which is equal to the distance between y and x. Okay, so we have symmetry. So the final property, we want to make sure that it obeys the triangle inequality. So, uh, four, we want to make sure that if z is another element of LP, i.e. z is equal to uh, z1, z2, etc. Uh, we want to make sure that the distance, this is what we want to show, the distance between x and y is less than or equal to the distance between x and z plus the distance between z and uh, y. Okay, so the first thing we can say is that the distance between x and y, just by definition, is equal to the summation i is equal to 1 to infinity, rather, uh, of uh, the modulus of um, xi minus yi to the power of p, all of that to the power of 1 over p, but this is equal to our same old trick again, summation i is equal to 1 to infinity modulus of xi minus zi plus zi uh, minus yi. I haven't done anything there that will change what we're actually summing up. Uh, all I've done is basically add something in and then divide, uh, sorry, subtract it back off again. Okay, so now we apply Minkowski's inequality. So where has Minkowski's inequality gone? Um, Minkowski's inequality. Okay, I'll rewrite it out. Uh, so Minkowski's inequality says that the summation uh, i is equal to 1 to infinity of, uh, we'll use different symbols because we've already used x and y uh, in the previous, um, in the uh, original problem. ai plus bi uh, to the power of p, all to the power of 1 over p, is less than or equal to uh, the summation uh, i is equal to 1 to infinity, the modulus of ai uh, to the p, to the power of 1 over p, uh, plus uh, the summation i is equal to 1 to infinity of the modulus of bi, bi, to the power of p, all of that to the power of 1 over p. Okay, uh, and uh, we had, on the other page, we had that the distance between x and y was equal to the sum i is equal to 1 to infinity, the modulus of xi minus zi plus zi minus yi to the power of p to the power of 1 over p. So basically, uh, get the colourful pens out again, uh, we're going to let this bit equal our a, and we're going to let this bit here equal our b over here. Okay, so if we do that, uh, we get that this is less than or equal to the summation i is equal to 1 uh, to infinity of xi minus zi to the p, all to the power of 1 over p, plus uh, the summation i is equal to 1 to infinity of uh, zi minus yi to the power of p, all of that to the power of 1 over p. Okay, but this says uh, this is exactly equal to the distance between x and z by definition, and this is the distance between z and y. So there we go, we have proven uh, the triangle inequality in this LP space, that the distance between x and y is less than or equal to the distance between x and z plus the distance between z and y. So thank you for watching.